Welcome back to Rocky Mountain Marketing, everyone. In this week's episode, we have Leslie Jones joining us. Leslie is on a mission to end the disconnection gap. She is the creator of the groundbreaking Spiral Method System, which ignites community, connection, and collective wisdom in groups. She's been envisioning the collection revolution in recent years and started a community platform in 2019 on Facebook. As an executive coach for over 25 years, Leslie has worked with major corporations such as Starbucks, Microsoft, Comcast, and small to mid-sized businesses, CEOs, and C-suite teams across the world. Leslie, thank you so much for coming on the show today. Uh, thank you, Katie. It's great to be here. <laughs> so, Leslie, let's start back at the beginning. Tell us where you grew up, what your life was like growing up. <laughs> um, I, I'm from Michigan. I am <laughs> chuckling because uh, I was just telling the story the other day. I have uh, lots of male CEO clients. Um, the past decade has been mostly male CEO clients, and um, I have a couple men's groups that I run. Um, and that started in high school with my high school buddies. There was a group of about eight or nine guys and three of us girls, and I heard more than I should have, probably, and uh, <laughs> got a, a facility, let's say, to be around guys and what guys deal with. Um, and then, yeah, I went to Michigan State University and then decided to road trip with my dog and um, spent six weeks alone cruising around the United States and then ended up in, in Colorado. Awesome. Now, I, I just have to interject real fast and give out a good go blue. I'm a big Michigan fan. Uh, no, my, no. <laughs> my family is all, my mom's side of the family is all from Michigan. So when you, when you were on this road trip with your dog and you drove through Colorado, what was it that just kind of drew you in? Oh, God, so good. Um, everyone in Colorado was nice, you know, and, and it wasn't a fake nice. That was the, what felt to me like, you know, I, I was, I really was looking for where do I want to land? And I went all, uh, you know, down to New Mexico and um, I just, I, I, I was in many different states and heading out to California. And then I thought, I'm just going to go back to Colorado. I, I liked the people there. Awesome. Yeah. Well, can you take us through your career journey where you started out and the different professional stops that you took along the way? Yeah, I mean, I'll try to be brief here, but um, I mean, I have a degree in psychology, so I decided I didn't know what I wanted to do. I decided, well, I might as well learn about people, and I'm sure that'll help me along the way. Um, I worked for a, uh, I sold computers for a small startup. And uh, then I decided I didn't want to sell things anymore. I wanted to sell ideas. And so I started promoting professional speakers and I had a speakers bureau. And then I decided, I told you earlier, Katie, I've had a very windy path. Um, I've always been an entrepreneur, uh, but I then opened up a company with a girlfriend of mine to help kids get their voices out into the world. And so we had a summer camp and we worked with CITV the local radio, local TV show, TV station. Um, so they would come to camp and they could make their own TV show. And I remember those kids were like, what do you mean? Are you going to tell us what to do? And we're like, no, it's your voice. What do you want to do? What do you want to say to the world? And uh, they would produce their own show, um, whatever they wanted. And then I got recruited to work with a uh, transformational coaching company on um, uh, worked on Wall Street, sweeping the nation, working with financial advisors. Uh, and then in about 2003, right after my daughter was born, I broke off on my own and decided I didn't want to support anymore. I wanted to get my own messaging out to the world. So um, yeah, that's when I started Leslie Jones Coaching and I've had a series of different companies in this, in this industry. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about let tell us a little bit about the the coaching that you provide with your current position. Uh, yeah, and I'm in a transition right now because Spiral Method is um, the methodology that I've been cultivating and developing for the past decade without even knowing it. Um, I'm I'm a traditional executive coach, 
in, you know, I work with leaders and CEOs and executives, and I do one-on-one -on -one work and group work, whether that's a peer group or a leadership team. Um, I've been doing that for 20 years, and, and then the spiral method, you know, I realized about three years ago, there is a method to my madness, and it's actually magic what's happening. And so someone said, why don't you outline what is ha what you're doing? And that turned into an 80 page manual and an online training portal and all of that. So I'm really in, in the next phase of my career, which is to train the trainer and get this method out to the world, as many possible people as we can. That's awesome. And you know, you, I said in your introduction that you started the Facebook group and a lot of small businesses and entrepreneurs not, might not be realizing the importance of Facebook groups and how you can mm. utilize that for your business in a whole different way than just a traditional Facebook page or, you know, having a, a LinkedIn business profile. Talk to us about the importance of your Facebook group. Yes. Oh, Katie. It's so, I just, I feel like I just really understood this last year. Um, and, and our Facebook group is Connection Revolution. I actually started that last year with the idea that my spiral method facilitators would be learning best practices and collaborating on there. And when COVID hit, actually, I decided to open it up to everyone. Like, why do I have to just limit it to spiral method facilitators as a learning platform? It's a learning platform for everyone. And I'm so, I think the value in this is, is community and collective wisdom, which is what Spiral Method is about. But I think all businesses can leverage this, right? How do we connect and brainstorm and collaborate and have, uh, it, to me, it's a whole different way of doing business, right? It's, it's, it's a win-win for everyone. It's not an individual economic focused um, I serve and deliver and you receive, it's actually, I receive a lot from those communities as well. And we're all benefiting from that. So I, I, I'm, we're still learning how to, you know, make that platform really robust. Honestly, I think I'm, we're at the tip of the iceberg of this. Now talk to us a little bit how you post in this Facebook group. Uh, again, mm -hmm. a lot of people might not really understand the importance of having a, a Facebook uh, group for their business or joining a Facebook group as their business and chiming in on the conversation. What are some of the conversation starters that you find work really well to engage your audience? You know, I think um, one, one thing that feels important is that every new member that comes in, we welcome them. So, you know, on a weekly basis, we're naming and, you know, individually calling out all of our new members. Uh, the other piece that I'm, I'm still practicing and learning how to do this well, but it's to find out what the community is needing and then let that dictate the content that I'm putting out. And right. So, um, yeah, it's, it is. I, I think I, that's a, a perfect thing to bring up. Um, yes. you said you seeing what the community is needing. So let's say someone asks uh, a question, and a couple people start chiming in, well, that question right there could be your next blog post that exactly. you can optimize on your website. And yes. that way you can then turn people from your community to your website, but then also you know what people out there that are interested in your product and yes. your services are asking and you already have the answer to it. So the next time someone goes on Google, you have that blog post right there with the answer. It's a great way of of creating content through your Facebook community group. I mean, it, and you know, listen, it's so funny because what do, how many of us sit around trying to figure out what content to put out and then we put out content and we don't get people listening to it because it's from our head, not from the real world, right? So it's, it's so obvious and so simple. I can't believe that it's taken this long to figure it out, right? Here we go. Yeah, and uh, do you find yourself kind of just engaging in your Facebook group as more of the, the answer person, or are you starting a lot of those conversation questions? It's both. 
It's both. And, you know, for me, a big part of my brand and what Spiral Method is also about, if you distinguish those as two separate brands or voices, we're about vulnerability. And um, my, the posts that I get the most traction from are the ones where I'm really just sharing my process or my journey and, and, you know, coming clean and being authentic about my struggles and all of that stuff. So um, there's usually answers inside of the vulnerability, right? Uh, so so I, I jump on that when I see other people sharing vulnerably. I, I like to jump on that and it's a mixture of um, sharing and ideas at the same time. Versus like, I'm the authority and I'm going to tell people these, you know, the solutions. Or, yeah. Yeah. But we're all human and we're all still yeah. figuring a lot of this out, you know, as we go. If yeah. someone is listening right now who is an aspiring or new business owner, what's the single <laughs> biggest piece of advice that you'd want to give him or her? Um, talk, to, talk to people, ask questions, ask for help. I mean, I, I don't know, I know that I wouldn't be where I am today without a lot of advocacy and support. Um, much of it that I didn't ask for, people just showed up. You know, if I would have been in my younger years asking more, uh, that would have been phenomenally useful. I think we're always, we're always, as business owners, we're gonna fumble around. I, I remember saying, I wish there was a one-stop shop. Like, you're gonna start up a business? Here's a place you can go and learn everything you need to know. But that's not how it works, right? We, we fall down and then realize information we should have had 10 years ago. <laughs> what do you think yeah. the biggest mistake business owners make when they're trying to grow and sustain a successful business? Mm, good question. Uh, well, um, providing services that, that they haven't tested yet, or, you know, um, I guess it's not providing services, it's designing services that are not tested yet, putting a lot of effort into the build before they've run some prototypes, um, making sure that the community wants what they have to offer. Um, I've definitely made that mistake in the past. And you think that having this Facebook group has kind of helped you kind of navigate your, your business path going forward? Definitely. And, um, you know, I'll say that there are still times when I put something out and I think, ooh, this is just going to nail it. People are going to love this. And they don't, right? It, it's, it's such a... Um, it's such a a chance to be humble and to remember that we're always learning. Um, a woman that I met recently, she said something along the lines like, fail, get ready to fail publicly. <laughs> if you're gonna have this kind of a group, get ready to fail publicly. And I feel like that's okay. I, I'm, I'm, I have a lot of witnesses now to me doing my best. <laughs> well, and another thing too is just create, you say, get ready to fail publicly, but it's true, truly just being authentic. And yeah. you know, it, that way people realize that, you know, we're all human and, you know, you're the, you're the leader behind this group, but you're learning just as much from them as they might be learning from you. That's right. Yeah. What does your model look like for finding and, and engaging and selling to your ideal clients and customers these days? Um, well, I have, most of my business has been based in referrals in the past and one-on-one. Um, -on -one. And so to be honest, I haven't done a ton of marketing. My rule has been make sure that my website doesn't turn people away <laughs> and uh, make sure that if I do uh, put out any kind of material, which historically has been newsletters and they've been very light, but that they're, they're very vulnerable and um, valuable. Uh, we are now looking at how to sell one to many, right? And implementing, uh, I, I, I have a, a whole team now um, building our models. So I, we're at the beginning of that really top of funnel campaign and 
uh, going out to summon the right people into our community. Absolutely. And you said a, a couple of really valid points. Uh, having a good website that people want to stay on and engage on. The longer they're on their website, the better you know, SEO ranking you're going to have. And then having a newsletter. I think a lot of businesses don't realize the value behind uh, email campaigns. That's one of the best ways to still get in touch with your ideal clients and customers. And having a email, like you said, just a, a monthly or, or weekly newsletter you know, is a great way to have uh, engage, just keep your company on your, your clients and your customers radar. Yeah, and it, it, it's, it, it seems like we want to have both, right? And, you know, there's a lot of younger millennials in my life that might not have a relationship to email campaigns and vice versa. A, a lot of, you know, a lot of the older folks that I work with, like what, 50 and above, are not even on Facebook. So we have to be reaching both and, and communicating the way people like to be communicated with. Absolutely. What, tell us a little bit more about living here in Colorado and why you decided to have your company based here in, in Colorado as opposed to, mm -hmm. you know, where a lot of other big corporations like New York or, or LA uh, typically might, you might be finding some of these larger corporations, Chicago. Yeah. I mean, um, I really ended up here because my uncle told me, find where you want to live first and then build your life. I, and he'll, he'd be really happy to hear me say that, that I took, actually took his advice. But I did just end up here and then start, start my life here. Um, find my husband and raise my children and all of that. So um, what, to me, what Colorado represents is, a, especially Denver, is a bit of a new way of operating in business. I, I know people come in from the big cities and it takes them a couple years to get to the pace of Denver. Um, and to wear tennis shoes and uh, shorts and go to a business meeting and then go biking afterwards. Like, you know, I think we're all still learning how to bring balance and a new way of living and doing work into our lives. But Denver, out of all places that I know of, embodies that. You know, and you brought up a good point there, too, with uh, wearing your shorts and shoes and then heading out the door and going on a bike bike ride. One passion that so many business owners and entrepreneurs have is to build a business around their lifestyle, not the other way around. How has that played out in your story and approach to running your business? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's such good questions, Katie. This is, um, I don't, I couldn't, I could not have built my business without having built my life. And the two are so intertwined and I don't see them as distinct from each other. Um, I, I've generally worked about three days a week is, is the way I'm working more now because I'm in a startup in a sense again with, with Spiral Method and getting this to the world. But um, I've got three kids. They are, one is special needs. He's high functioning autism. Um, I am a mental health advocate. I do a lot of volunteer work and I have a robust community of friends and a spiritual life and a dance practice and yoga and right like I I really have been committed to being there for my kids and and like four o'clock when they get off the bus I'm there ready to be in the evening with them right so um, it's always been like that for me, and it's what I've been teaching people. Um, feels like the world is, is on board, <laughs> like more now than ever. <laughs> That's awesome. So talk to us a little bit about your, you know, your, your, your company that you're really trying to get up and off of you know, the ground with the spiral method. Are you kind of focusing on offering virtual coaching and, and leadership through your website? Yeah, uh, well, first I'll say Spiral Method is a uh, community practice. It, it's, um, it's a way of being in a group meeting that brings power and connection and accesses collective wisdom. It's, it's the methodology for community. So in, uh, in effect, it's not coaching. 
it's just a way of being together that everyone's voices get in the room and everyone exhales and takes a deep breath and realizes we can just be authentic together and these are strangers and it's only been an hour and I've learned more about myself and feel more connected to these people than I've experienced in my work life with, with you know, the people I work with, for example. So we have found that having those meetings um, are, go just as well on a Zoom, in a Zoom room than they do in a physical room, which is pretty exciting. I mean, I was, I had never even considered trying it before because it's, we're doing such deep, intimate group work. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's been just as effective. We might normally have 12 to 16 people. We're doing eight to 10 in a Zoom room. Um, but now it's, it's opening up the possibility that we could train a thousand people at a time um, because I'm training the trainer. So I'm teaching people to bring Spiral Method to their small groups. And I had it limited at 100 for face-to-face -face training, and now it's not limited anymore. <laughs> well, and it, it definitely will help, uh, you know, you reach a whole another set of audience that, or in demographics, you know, now it'll be <sighs> easier for you to get in touch with people in Chicago and Australia and, you know, the entire world. So that's, having the capability of doing Zoom and virtual meetings is, is awesome for your company. That's great. It's really huge. I'm, I'm compiling a list right now of the 10 people to represent 10 different countries that will be doing a global spiral method Zoom call within the next couple of weeks. And I can't wait, you know, what's happening in Israel and Portugal and South Africa, uh, you know, at this time. And oh, it's exciting. That's awesome. Now, before we finish up, is there anything that I didn't ask you that you, during today's discussion that you think is important to share? Um, you know, I just would say to, to new business owners or any business owners is, you know, just get out there and, and yeah, be in kindergarten together, be connected and trust yourself and get out there, get out in front. I wish I would have done that sooner in my career. Leslie, this has been such a great conversation. Where can we find out more about you and your business online? Uh, you know, spiralmethod.com or Connection Revolution Facebook page. Come join us. And um, we're, those are the two places we're putting our content. Great. Well, thank you again so much for coming on the show today. Thanks, Katie.